want to keep your program that simulates these machines as simple as possible. Now, there's lots of algorithms, and I'll teach one in another week or so about how to do that. But there's one kind of a folklore algorithm that isn't very efficient that deals with this reversal technique. But it's just so cool that you should know it. Here's what you do. Say you want to minimize a machine, like the one we started with. Go ahead and reverse it just like we did, and then convert it back to a deterministic machine just like we did. And here's what you get. Okay? And now do it all again. Reverse this again, convert it back to a deterministic machine, and then see what you got. Now what you got then is a machine that does the same thing you started with, right? Because you just reversed it twice. But interestingly enough, as long as you're careful to chop off all the things like this that aren't connected anymore, then when you're done doing this, double reversal, you have the minimum finite state machine. So like I said, as far as I know, that's not published anywhere. And it's just folklore. And, and, and I do remember getting an email from, from a co-author of mine who's really an expert on this stuff. Uh, Sheila Greibach, and she explained to me very briefly, oh, you see what's going on, of course, and she described it in a few sentences, and I didn't quite see it at that moment, and I never went back and looked at the email and tried to figure it out. Uh, but it, it might not be hard to figure out, it just never did it. Um, but it certainly is interesting, and it does seem a little bit surprising. Anyhow, questions about this? Um, I yeah. Have a question. Uh, the epsilons, I noticed you just got rid of them sort of skipped over them since they are sort of a free move, so to speak. Right. Um, so do you do that in all cases? I mean, do you ever see epsilons still being used in the deterministic machine? No, no. Uh, no. Deterministic machines can't have epsilons. Epsilons okay. make machines non-deterministic. So, but if you have non-deterministic machines with lots of epsilons in them, you can always convert them back to determinism using this, this trick. Basically, you know, if I say what's going to happen on a zero, if there's any epsilon moves, I've got to follow those all the way to the end, say there's a lot of them, spread them all out, and then look for the zeros and ones. So I did this example with epsilons partly to show you this reversal and partly to show you that the presence of epsilons can be taken care of with the same trick we use to take care of non-determinism, just by looking forward. But, but normal deterministic machines wouldn't have them. OK. Yeah, Peter. Do the reverse. You're, are you always going to lose the, the, the dead zone? Like, yes. Are there other conditions that would? Yes, there are other. Right. So, so Peter's thinking just the right idea. The question is, what do you lose? What do you lose when you do reverse? And you clearly lose dead states, because all their arrows reverse back, and there's no way to get to them. But you might lose other things. And characterizing exactly what it is you lose ends up, you lose the things that are not identical. That's what ends up happening. Uh, it's kind of neat. I don't, well, like what are you going to lose here? Does everybody see that you kind of lose this state on the way back? Right, because the arrows go back in here. And this is no longer an initial state, or it doesn't have to be. It, that's why, when you're all done, this disappears, and you get a, a four-state thing. It, it, I, I don't really understand it, so I'm just blabbing now. But, but I'm sure there's some nice idea behind it, if I thought about it. OK. What, what makes you think it's true, then? Because, uh, because somebody told me who I trust. <laughs> <laughs> and because I tried it. I mean, <laughs> well, I, what makes me think it's true? I proof by example. I've done it a few times, and it seems to work. Uh, I, I am not convinced it's true. I, I would not bet a lot of money that it's true. Possibly it's not true. But, but the person who told me is very reliable. She's quite bright, and, uh, and I trust her. And I never sat down and convinced myself. So I can't, I can't claim that it's true, but, but I think it is. By the way, that algorithm is not so good, because in the reversal process, you can have this exponential explosion of states. So we don't use this method. We've got to have a better method. And there is a better method. There's a polynomial method that uses dynamic programming strategy. We'll get to that. Regular sets are closed under all sorts of things, as I mentioned. And Dimitri pretty much touched on this yesterday, but I want to touch on it a little more now, because this here, the reversal was a tough proof using the machines. And it led us into all sorts of, 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 of alleyways. But now we're going to do ones that are a little easier. The complement was a little easier. Let's do union. If I have a set I give you, like the set of uh, strings with, a, with an even number of zeros, and I have another set, 
set of strings containing 101. Both of these are regular sets. Both of these have finite state machines. You could draw them right now. You probably did examples just like this in recitation yesterday. You have a million examples to do on your problem set. You can draw these even on the spot. It doesn't take too long. This is three states or four states. This is two states. Draw them up. What if I said now, give me a finite state machine for the set of all strings that either have an even number of zeros or contain 101? If you try to do this from scratch, you start keeping track of two things simultaneously. And you can get confused. But if you raise your level of abstraction a little bit and think of this as simply the union of these two sets, either this or this, here's an automatic way to get it. Give me the machine for the first one. Give me the machine for the second one. I'll throw them in here. Here's the machine for even zeros. I don't care what it looks like. Here's the machine for containing 101. I don't care what it looks like. You guys fill it in. Make it up. Here's a machine that accepts the union of those. New start state, epsilon to here, epsilon to here. Take all the final states from here, all the final states, all the final states, epsilon to a single final state. Everybody see what I did? I just said either go here or go here. If there's a way to accept the string because it has an even number of zeros, then choose this way. Go through the deterministic machine, and when you're all done, jump out to a final state. If there's a way to accept the string because it contains 101, then choose this way and end up jumping out to a final state. And if it's neither one of these, then you'll never get to a final state because no matter which way you choose, you can't get through the machine. So this funny-looking non-deterministic machine is the union of these two. And that's it. Now, converting this to a deterministic machine might make the resulting machine look a little ugly. Now, did Dimitri talk about taking the product of two machines? If you went through the trouble of converting this non-deterministic machine to a deterministic machine, you would do exactly what he calls the product. All that does is pair these states together. Because on a 0, 1, you're either in this one or this one. And on the next 0, 1, you're either in this pair or this pair. It just pairs up. But you don't even need to know what he talked about. Just convert this to a deterministic machine, just like we convert all non-deterministic machines to a deterministic machine. And it's one more power of non-determinism. In a second here, we can see that union is a closed operation without having to deal with any more complicated argument. Being able to build on the fact that we know non-determinism is equivalent to determinism. All right, questions about this? The intersection is not so easy. No, the intersection, you can't do it this way, but you can do intersection a different way. So we'll talk about intersection in just a second. Everyone know how to do complement? Complement is pretty straightforward. You, you toggle the final and non-final states. Intersection is the next thing. We'll talk about it in a moment. Before I do intersection, what if I said, I want to accept the set of strings where some prefix of the string, some first part, has an even number of zeros, and then the remainder of the string contains 101. That's called the concatenation of these two. Take any string from this set, any string from that set, connect them together. The set of all those strings is the concatenation of these two. Take all the strings with even number of zeros, connect onto them any string containing 101. All those strings are in the concatenation. How do I make a machine that accepts the concatenation of these two? I just take this machine, good, and then take all the final states of that machine and have an E move to the initial state of the second machine. So first I look for one string, and then I look for the other. And I can decide or guess when to use that E move to start looking for the second one. I can stay in my first one looking for a final state, or I can jump over. And that E move is very important to the power. And if you get rid of the non-determinism, you'll get a, perhaps a complicated machine that's deterministic. But again, you can see that it's closed under union and complement and concatenation by this non-deterministic idea. OK, Doug, you have a question? OK. Teresa, you're thinking about something? Why do you say that e is so powerful? Or is that because um, let's do a real example. Maybe this will help. Um, let's concatenate these two. All right, so Teresa, you have to help me. That's what you get for asking questions. Let, uh, let's make a machine that has even number of zeros. We start here. Okay. Zero, goes to the next zero goes to the next state. And then go one more. Well, that means I have an odd number of zeros. Go back if I have an even number of zeros. Okay. And that'll be my final state. Okay. And if I get a 1 here, 